What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to this edition uh, of Tea with Tallulah. Uh, my co-host, of course, is the lovely and talented Tallulah Johnson from across the pond. Tallulah, how are you doing this morning or this I'm afternoon? Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing really good. So off the air, we were talking about the the cold. And in so right now in London, you said it's one degree. Is that Celsius? Yes. Oh, okay. Hang on. I'm going to ask Alexa. Alexa. What is one degree Celsius in Fahrenheit? One degree Celsius is 33.8 degrees. Oh, yeah. So it is cold there. Holy moly. Yeah. So 33 degrees here is one degree there. Okay. That makes sense. So, yeah, you guys are definitely, definitely. Alexa, stop. Alexa always wants to give you more information than you really ask for. Um, at any rate, it's very, very cold. It's supposed to be snowing up here in the Northeast uh, here very, very soon. But you guys did not tune in to hear and listen to us talk about the weather. We are going to talk about Drew Barrymore. Now, Tallulah, prior to you looking at this, um, uh, uh, watching the video that I sent over to you, do you know anything about Drew Barrymore's uh, history? Uh, do you know about her childhood, her upbringing, her as an actress, or is that is is that just an American thing? Um, I'm aware because it's kind of around my my generation that she okay. was she was really big. So okay. I remember there was a little bit of an unstable, a really unstable childhood ah, for her, okay. um, and um, and she was she was so popular. She was so popular. Yes, she was. Um, yeah, unstable childhood. I know she she now has two young girls, okay. um, approaching around the age of ten, I think. Okay. And um, yeah, yeah, but there was a lot. There was a lot of dramas and and really harsh things the girl actually went through when she was um, when she was a kid. Okay, you probably know more uh, than most Americans do. So <clears throat> I'll just go through the highlights here. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things before we go. So obviously, Drew Barrymore she rose to fame. Uh, with the internationally acclaimed hit E.T. Uh, she was the cute, I mean, as a little girl, she was cute as a button. Uh, she did very, very well. That gained her uh, international uh, recognition. And then, of course, it sort of launched her career. Well, we go down to her early life and childhood. And this is where I'm just going to read, I'm just going to read uh, this paragraph here. So um, it says, uh, Barrymore grew up on Poinsettia Place, and some people call it Poinsettia, I call it Poinsettia, I don't know, um, <clears throat> until she moved to Sherman Oaks. In her 2015 memoir, Wildflower, she says she talks like a, quote, valley girl because she, blew, she, she grew up in Sherman Oaks. She moved back to West Hollywood upon becoming emancipated. Now, um, for those of you who don't know what being emancipated means, being emancipated uh, means that as a minor, you are freed from the, I guess, control of your parents. In other words, you are going to be treated like an adult. You can sign contracts or legally bound to contracts and things of that nature. Um, I don't know why she was emancipated. My guess is that, and I, I could have done a little bit more research, but I was a little bit short on time. But my guess is that her parents were, pro her, children don't become emancipated for no reason. It, it usually has something to do with the parents. You guys in the chat, if you guys know more than I do, uh, listen, let me know. Uh, because I would, I would certainly, I would certainly like to know. But so she was emancipated at at the age of fourteen. So at the age of fourteen, Tallulah, she was given the responsibility and the uh, really the freedom of an adult. <clears throat> and so it says uh, Drew Barrymore, <clears throat> pardon me, attended elementary school at Fountain Day School in West Hollywood and Country School. In the wake of her sudden stardom. Barrymore endured a notoriously troubled childhood. That's what you talked about a little earlier. She was a regular at Studio 54 as a young girl. Now, are you aware of Studio 54 and what that was about back in the day, Tallulah? Or do you need a quick, um, I can give you a quick little synopsis. It's really, it's really quite interesting. Uh, was it just a club? It was, it was a nightclub that was frequented by Hollywood stars. Sex, drugs, all kinds of stuff went on. Uh, Michael Jackson was always at Studio 54 and he was younger. It's like everybody who was anybody, Woody Allen, anybody who was anybody in Hollywood always spent time at Studio 54. Well, it continues. And her nightlife and constant partying became a popular subject with the media. She was placed in rehab at the age of 13 and spent 18 months in an institution for the mentally ill. A suicide attempt <clears throat> at 14 put her back in rehab 
followed by a three-month stay with singer David Crosby and his wife. The stay was precipitated, Crosby said, because she, quote, needed to be around people that were committed to sobriety. Barrymore described the period of her, of her life for Little Girl Lost. After a successful juvenile court petition for emancipation, she moved into her own apartment at the age of 15. Um, let's see, there was one more. So, so what's going on here, Tallulah, is that Drew Barrymore, I mean, to be placed in drug rehab at the age of 13 years old, that is that is a huge, I mean, to me, that's a black flag, uh, even worse than a red flag. What are your thoughts on... What are just your initial thoughts upon upon knowing that she was in alcohol and drug rehab at the age of 13 years old? Uh, my thoughts are, I'll be honest, it comes, it might come from a nurturing place, but, you know, there was, there was no available parents. Yeah. Um, there was no one available emotionally or physically for her. So, you know, she would have just been exposed to all sorts and probably dealing with those feelings of rejection from, huh. um, from her parents, she would have been using on that. Um, so she would have tried drugs and thought, oh, this makes me feel, this makes me feel yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, takes yeah. away the anxiety. So that's what I'm guessing she, um, that's why I'm guessing was going on with this drinking and using. And plus she was living in a, in a, um, uh, not reality. No, you know, right. she wasn't living in reality at all. She was in, uh, uh, she was, she was in the top 5% of people yes. she was hanging around with. And back then there wasn't awareness over drugs and drinking, how there is, you know, only in the last few years. So. Sure. Sure. What is alarming to me is that she was a regular at studio 54 as a young girl and then entered rehab at 13. What is a 13-year-old girl doing at Studio 54? Let me just jump in here. Studio 54, the, the nightclub era. Let me just let me just read this quickly because this is this is shocking. It says when CBS began marketing the building in 1976, various parties in the art and fashion world expressed interest into seeing it converted into a nightclub. Uh, male model Uva Harden tried to get the tried to get gallery owner Frank Lloyd to finance the club until Lloyd lost the nine million dollar lawsuit to the estate of the artist Mark Rothko in the Rothko case. In 1977, Steve Rubel and Ian Schrager transformed the theater into a nightclub called Studio 64 with Jack Ducey as the financial backer. They operated the company as a Broadway catering corporation. It took only six weeks to transform the theater into a nightclub and cost four hundred thousand before its grand opening on April 26th. Here was the scene. Event planner Robert Isabel had four tons of glitter dropped in a four dropped in a four inch layer. Jesus Christ. Onto Studio 54 for a New Year's Eve party. Oh, and Ian Schrager said it was, quote, like standing on stardust. That sounds like the drug stalking. Uh, and it left glitter that could be found months later in attendees' clothing and homes. Listen to these, listen to some of these people who were there. Woody Allen, Freddie Mercury, Al Pacino, Dolly Parton, John Belushi, holy moly, Jacqueline Bissett, Truman Capote, wow, um, good, got Gia Karangi, that's the uh, the model, uh, Drew Barrymore, of course, Tina Turner, uh, listen, um, Tallulah, these are all, I mean, these are all adults, what in the world, like, you're right, there could not have been parenting available, because if I'm Drew's parents, I'm like, what are you doing going to Studio 54, what the hell is going on? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm looking at the names now on here and you, yeah. you know, you've got Robin Williams, you know, he had, he had really big struggles, Mick Jagger, yeah. you know, all these people were, were, were a bit older than her at the time, you know, they're all sort of 10, some 15 years older, some five yeah. years older, some 20 years older. Tallulah's there, look. Oh yeah, look at that, look <laughs> at that, Tallulah was there, how about that? Is Tallulah, I mean, so, so like, are you in another life? You were a, a, a British DJ, London based. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah. This is big, incredible. Big, big names, but craziness. Yeah. 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 Got, Trump was there. Trump was there. Look. Yeah. Donald Trump was there along with, uh, I think it's first wife, Ivana Trump. So that's his first wife. Yeah. Czech American businesswoman, Salvador Dali. Are you kidding me? Like like David Bowie, of course. Oh, that's David Bowie's scene. Um, Tommy Hilfiger, uh, dude. Michael Jackson, Victor Hugo. I just do not. I don't know. I don't know how this happened to Lula. How does a thirteen-year-old girl, Richard Gere, Betty Ford, Ric Flair, Farrah Fawcett, who, in my mind, Farrah Fawcett's the most beautiful woman who ever lived. That's just all there is to it. Um, 
I don't know how in the world this happened. 13 year old girl at Studio 54 drinking and doing drugs and ended up having to be in rehab at 13. I can't believe it. I didn't even know that. Yeah, that is it's insane. unbelievable. All right, so let's fast forward here before we get to the video. So what we're going to do now is we are going to go through Drew Barrymore's dating history. And it is long and distinguished. Uh, wow, Christian Bale uh, was on that list. I guess that's before he got big. And by the way, I know I'm speaking in hyperbole here. Uh, I believe that Christian Bale and Johnny Depp are the greatest actors of our time. That's just me. Uh, Corey Feldman, Teen Heartthrob, uh, Balthasar Getty, uh, Rick Solomon, uh, Leland Hayward III, David Arquette. I didn't know that. Uh, let's see, Cora Namek, Jamie Walters, Billy Idol, that's awesome. Uh, Jeremy Thomas, uh, Eric Erlinson, Ed Norton, how about that? Oh, she dated Jane Pratt, so it looks like she was a bit of a switch hitter. Luke Wilson, Henry Thomas, Tom Green, I remember when Tom Green had testicular cancer, Drew Barrymore was sort of there for him, they fell in love and got married. Um, Brandon Davis, Sam Rockwell, also a very good actor. Fabrizio Moretti, uh, I'm sorry, F Fabrizio Moretti. Uh, Hugh Grant, Spike Jones. Wow, that was the uh, director of the movie Her. Justin Long, Ed Westwick, Jason Siegel. That was rumored. Uh, let's see, Nick Dash, Will Copelman, who she had two kids with, and of course David Hutchinson. The bottom right. line here, yeah, the bottom line here, Tallulah, is she's dated a lot of dudes, which means that her like this is just her body count, right? This is just her body count in terms of the the men that she's dated. Who knows how many one night stands or hookups she had. At, again, at such that young age. What are your thoughts on her dating history? What what does that tell you? I'm trying to work out whereabouts like all these actors were in their career when yeah. she was dating them. Ah. Um, and looking at kind of people like Ed Westwick, um, maybe, maybe Christian Bell, I don't know because I don't know the dates that she was actually dating them. Yeah. But it seems like a lot of guys as they were sort of come as they were coming up, not when they were fully established, I could have this wrong, it'd be great to hear from the audience. Um, they weren't fully established. Right. Yet. Yes. Okay, okay. But what I'm wondering now, and I might, yeah, I'll leave the next comment that I have until maybe the, well, actually, no, I'll bring it in now. The fact that, you know, Drew is now, I think she's 45. 40, yeah, she's 46. Yeah, yeah. Is these guys, right? There's two things that's going to be going on for her. She's going to want to date someone naturally, like any female is, a guy that has a higher status than her. That's right. That's right. But, Someone like Christian Bale and also uh, even Ed Westwick, all these guys, and there's a big list of big names yes, there. Yes, it is. They can all date women that are 21. Right. Right. With no problems. And I think that's a lot of what's going into playing out for her at the moment is that realization. You know, I know she's saying, oh, I can't date with kids. Blah, blah. You know, what? I'm going to go more into it because okay. I have so much to say on this subject. But Perfect. yeah, then, um, yeah, but there's a lot of guys here. And the worst thing is, I think the worst thing with this is these guys all know each other. Yes. That's yes. really bad. That's like that's like you know. Uh, please excuse me, Devon, if you're in the, in the studio at the moment. No, that's geez, like I... Devon, right? Or or I don't know a, a podcaster's uh, partner who you've got the list. Oh, Donovan Sharp, Myron Gaines. You yeah, know, you've got that right. whole list of yeah, guys, right? Right, right, like, right, right. Your values, your values, just going to go down. You do not go with in the same oh circle god, with men. Yes. Oh my god. And as you can see, Kristen Bale was I actually did the math. Bale was born in 1974. Well, this was in uh, this was in 1987. She was 13 and he was 13. Oh, okay. So there's a, there there's a young Kristen Bale, uh cute as a button, uh, as you can see. Uh Corey Feldman was a teen heartthrob. Uh, back in, and their relationship was their relationship was nine months. Corey Feldman was the teen heartthrob back in the 1980s. I don't know why um, he was. I don't know. I mean, he just didn't. He's not a. He's not really a good looking dude, as far as I know. Um, so let's see. Let, let, let let's just look and see how long these relationships lasted. So this relationship was a month. Okay. What's 
I just want to bring it sounds like she may have lost I mean if she was drinking and using at 13 she may have lost her virginity that young I'm I'm thinking she probably did yeah Whoa. And, yeah so she lost her virginity she might have even lost it before then um a girl that I dated uh a girl that I dated back when I was 31 she was 19 she had a six-year-old kid um, which means she had her child at 13, which means she probably started having sex a lot sooner than that. So there you go. Um, let's see, Balthazar Getty, five months. You can see that all, none of these relationships really lasted that long, right? So here's another yeah. one, Rick Salomon. That lasted one month. Uh, Leland Hayward, that lasted eight months. Like, dude, she is just running through them. Three months, David Arquette. I don't know that these even count as relationships, to be honest with you. Two months. Holy, like, what are we doing? Jamie Walters, one one year. Dude, she's not dating these guys. Okay, they don't have it here for uh, for Billy Idol. But, dude, like, you can tell all of the – well, there's a one-year relationship. What does it tell you that another one-year relationship? What does it tell you with all of these short-term relationships? What does this tell you about her – as a person, I think that she was probably just too immature to be dating around at that point. Am I wrong? Yeah, absolutely. She was too immature. And it also from her history, you know, men wouldn't have wanted to deal with, you know, everything that's going on with her with 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 um, the drugs and the alcohol. Yeah, they would have yeah, yeah. they would have been more interested. These guys actually would have been more interested in their goal and their career um, rather than, you know, catering to someone that that was just going to do that. Oh my god! You know? Wow, that's what I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, listen, that's. I'm. I'm probably thinking along those along those same lines, and so that leads us to this video. Now, um, this is fair use, fair use, fair use. Of course, I do. I do have to say that. So what I've done is I've altered the video a little bit visually, and I've also sped it up. So they're going to be talking a little bit fast, but we can still make out what they're. Uh, what they're saying. Obviously, I'll have to pause it every eight to 10 seconds so, so that I stay out of copyright. But uh, away we go. Are out there looking for, if you're looking for a hookup, great, girl, start that from the bedroom. But if, you're, totally if, you're, if you are like, hey, I, I'm look, I want this to possibly be a relationship, don't start it from the bedroom. Don't have your bed in the background. That's great advice. Like, like it's it. sending a real. This is funny. So he's advising her, listen, if you want to have a hookup, have a hookup. But if you want a relationship, don't start with the bedroom. And she acknowledges that's good advice. What are your thoughts on that? Or in general, or yeah, with her. Of course. Well, in general and with her, actually, because I think that's good advice. Yeah, I mean, if you if you're gonna if you're gonna go on a date with someone, it's um it's not particularly the best idea to um to sleep with them on the first night. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Um, <laughs> listen, ladies, if you're watching, um, men, we are going to try to sleep with you on the first date because that's what we do. But when we as men try to sleep with you on the first date, that is our way of shit testing you. Passing the shit test is not sleeping with us on the first date. Failing it is allowing us to sleep with you on the first date. Because if you let us sleep with you on the first date, if if we're worth any, if we're worth anything, we're only going to keep you in the FWB category. That's just I'm just putting it like it is. Okay. Sort of a sex forward message. Yeah. And I. This is funny. Uh, BK from the Rocky says it sounds like she's counting her flings as long term relationships. That makes sense. It sounds like she was just sleeping around and this website is characterizing them as relationships. Hang on a second. Um, oh, man of understanding. $5 super chat says just referred my cousin to your channel. He just found out that his wife quote was that his wife was fat is cheating after she dropped the weight. Dude, I talk just to sort of divert here to Lula. Um, women who are overweight and, and when, when women who are overweight if they're married when they're overweight, when they lose all the weight, they almost always cheat simply because their sexual market value goes up. Um, the reason I think that is, is because their husband now becomes unattractive to them because he committed to a fat girl. And if he committed to a fat girl, how high could his value really be? So when she gets skinny and loses all the weight, she's unattracted to her husband and goes off and cheats on him. What do you think about that? I've never thought about that, but it sounds yep. like it could be something subconscious for sure. Yes, yes. Yeah. There's actually an article uh, that I broke down, uh, God, about a year and a half ago. And there was a study that something like 85% of women who got the bariatric or the lap band or the sleeve, 85% of women ended up ending their marriages if they were married before they lost the weight. So that's just kind of how that goes. Wow. Uh, Cigarman85 says short-term relationship means long-term craziness. Let's continue. Um, um. Uh-oh. Not ready for that. 
I don't know how to date with kids. You know, I'm not. I don't know how to date with kids. Do you have anything on that? Yeah, I, I can see straight through what, what, what's going on. Let's see. Her. Let's see it. Let's, <laughs> let's hear it. This is great. Oh God. I mean, um, she she's I watched this interview in full and okay. what she's doing is she's placing this on. I'm a really good mom and mm -hmm. I want to make sure I have the right guy for my children. And yes, there is an element to that. Every woman wants to make sure the right man is around around her kids. Right. But I think with with regards to her, she can't find the right guy for her and her children because she is going to be looking at guys that have a higher status than her. And those guys that have a higher status than her or even the same status as her, same age as her, are going to be going for younger women who do not have children. There is absolutely nothing wrong with having kids. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. However, men do not want to parent or even if they're not parenting, be around another man's offspring. He doesn't want to provide for them. Right. Maybe much, much later in life if she, you know, but he had kids, she had kids perhaps, but not really. Um, I mean, she looks, she looks really good, obviously, for, for her age, for sure. But it's not going to change the fact of her, you know, Fresh and Fit have been talking a lot about this recently, about preferences. Yes. And she's got a preference, but she's not going to sit there and say, oh, well, actually, no, I want a guy who's, you know, my age, who, um, you know, is willing to look after my kids. He has to be a higher status. She's not going to be going for a standard guy. She's probably got a queue of guys because because of who she is. She's probably got a queue of guys that are 45 that would date her. But they're not the types of men that she would right. want. I agree. And as you can see here, Tallulah, um, Drew Barrymore has seen better days. I mean, she used to be, I mean, I mean, she used to be hot. I mean, look at her. She used to be, I mean, listen, man, this is when she's probably in her early twenties. Uh, yeah. no woman. Oh, my alarm's going off. No woman is going to look, uh, look as good at 20 at, at 46 as she did when she was 26. No way. But the point is, is it, is it's just like you said, and it's, it's unfortunately for women, it is in their biological hard drive, not to go for men with lower status than them. It doesn't it, like it, it. And women would love to be able to love a man unconditionally, a love a man of lower status, but the, the, the advancement of the species that would, how can I put this? That would effectively, that would, we'd end up breeding out the, 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 the best genes in history. This is why the creator, whoever he or she is, <clears throat> made it so that women are, women look to date up. They look to marry up. Drew Barrymore is 46. She's worth zillions of dollars and she has two kids. I don't know what high value man in his right mind would want to be even in a relationship with her. Yeah. And it's not, a, it's not only that, it's she's, um, she's not only going for the high status just for herself and to be attracted to him, but because she's got two girls. Right. So she'll be mm -hmm. definitely looking for someone more high status, yes. you know, for protecting and provisioning as well. But you know, all the, you can see, look, what, watch when she cries, you can see, yeah. like, yeah, there is emotion there. There is absolute emotion there. There is some truth to it, but you, she's an actress, right? Yes, yes. She's crying because she can't get these guys. And these guys, you know, Christian Bell, all these these dudes that, you know, she's basically oh. been alpha widowed yes, about a thousand times. Oh, of course, yes. Is, yeah, these dudes probably in that industry are you know, she'll still be sort of in touch with people. Well, she will sure. be in touch with people in that industry and she will be looked, unfortunately, I know she's had her problems, but as damaged, oh, yes. uh, round through, yes. all of those things. Oh, yeah. And no guy will respect her nope. because of that. There's no way that Christian Bell would even like text her back now. No way. I mean, maybe out of common courtesy, but yeah, like Kristen Bale is a he's a mega superstar. Uh, Black That's Lander what she's crying about. That's yeah. what she's crying. Trust me, this is where it's coming from. <laughs> and she's blaming it all on oh, because you know, um, I, I it's she's making it out to be as if it's, you know, um. I'm looking for just the best person for my kids. That is not all that's going on here. Yeah, I agree. No, I, I totally agree. It's 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 because the best man for her kids is not going to be the best man for her. The best man for her kids is going to be the provider male, right? The, the the provider male who the provider male 
who doesn't mind, you know, wifing up a 46-year-old single mom who has ridden the Hollywood carousel, who had who has had drug and alcohol problems apparently up until about two years ago. She's only two years sober, so she could relapse at any time. Um, it sounds like she struggled with drugs and alcohol for most of her life, really, right? Yeah, no, it definitely sounds like it. That's actually quite shocking that she went into rehab at 13. I thought, I know that she's she's been sober for a while, but I would have thought that she would have been sober by maybe her late 20s. Yeah. Maybe like 28, 20, 30 even. I didn't realize that it was... Um, it was a recent thing. That's incredible. It really, really is incredible. Um, uh, Wintrell uh, on the YouTube side says, wow, she just blamed her kid. Let's listen to that again. Do you think she blamed her kid? Let's listen again. Not ready for that. I don't know how to date with kids. You know, I'm not there yet. I have two young girls and I'm like. So do you think she blamed her kids there or is she just trying to be, hey, listen, I don't know how to date with kids. I don't know how to date with kids and it's kill to party. Yeah. You know, right. saying kill, it's kill to party oh, all over. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. these children are getting in the way of me dating. Mm. That's all I'm seeing here. I know I'm being really, really harsh because no, you know, this, the, I agree. Had, this woman has been through so much, obviously, in her childhood to end up, you know, going through uh, drugs and alcohol and, and, you know, it's just awful. It's just awful. It's tragic. But... Yeah, it's these guys. Look at that list. Those every yeah, single one of those guys is not going to deal with any woman oh, no. that has not got their own children. No, no unless no it's way. their kids. I mean, look at Billy Idol. I you you brought up. Oh, you know, there's no timestamp on that. I, yeah. I promise you, Billy Idol. Look at him. That was a one night stand. Of course, of course. That's wow. That's a very <laughs> good point. Anytime it says rumor, I think it's a one night stand. Um. That guy is that. Yeah, that guy is. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Billy Idol's not in a relationship with yeah. anybody, man. No, hell no. no. Um, yeah, man. All of these, and it's interesting. <clears throat> I didn't look at the lengths of the relationships, but it just sounded like these were all flings, right? And this, 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 um, this website is trying to characterize these flings as relationships. Let's just go to Hugh Grant here. Um, oh wait a minute, relationships twelve? No, 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 no. Let me let me just go to Hugh Grant here. I'm gonna view the couple. This is incredible. There is, again, there is no, this This looks like a one night stand. It's always one month, three months. She was with Tom Green for two years, but she never loved him. We knew that she would never love him because he's just, you know, he's Tom Green. He's kind of a goofy guy. Uh, Tom Green probably wouldn't have anything to do with her at this point in time. Um, all right, let's continue. Wow, this is hard. I don't want to bring people home. I think that it would take me a very long time to meet someone and get to know them before I could even ever introduce them to my daughter. Oh boy, now she's speaking from a position of supposed abundance. She said, I would have to take my time to get to know these guys. Tallulah, she's 46. She ain't got no. much time, right? No. No, she hasn't. She's, uh, she hasn't got much time. Mm. And the thing is here is that the the problem is and i've done i've done a video on this in the past oh, okay is that guys are going to be telling her right she's going to have a load of guys orbiting you know uh willing to you know uh give up everything for her you know because she's drew barrymore right? right and she does not look bad i don't think she looks bad for her age at all okay now they're gonna she's gonna have that but she's gonna take what they're telling her as truth so she probably thinks that she's like okay i'm an eight nine or a ten when actually in the eyes of the high value guys she's not wow the reality is she's not she's not and it's mm -hmm. you know it's these guys and it, this is this is again back to today the amount of girls like fresh and fit right yeah. all the girls yeah. that go on there I'd say the majority of them are pretty but i, I would say that because they're all a lot younger than me sure but you know they're sitting there going i'm a nine <laughs> you Jesus are Christ. like yeah you're young you're beautiful but no. you are not a nine there are no girls that are a nine on there like you right. get some great eights you get some great sevens uh -huh. you don't get later i'm a nine i'm a ten i'm i'm the one percent you hear this all the oh time God, it's and it's like no thing. because you've had a guy on your these girls have only fans mm -hmm. and instagrams mm -hmm. and all these things saying you're a 10 or like, you know, they'll put up with her bad behavior because they're so desperate. And they take that as I can get any guy I want because yes. they have a load of low value guys 
saying this. Yes, yes. And it's not true. And Drew Mar Barrymore is an exact version of this, but ramped right. up to another level, right? Yeah. And her yeah. listen, and her 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 pool of potential suitors is even smaller because of who she is. I mean, I'm sure I could look up her net worth. I mean, I'm sure she's worth into the millions of dollars, dude. Drew Barrymore has more yeah. money than you and I will ever accumulate in 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 a in, in, in hundred lifetimes. But that's exactly, and I say this all the time: the more money, status, fame whatever the case may be that a woman acquires, the further she shrinks her pool of potential suitors. I've said this for years, the way Myron characterized it. He says, listen, man, the more money make, the more money a man makes, the more doors open, the more money a woman makes, the more doors close. She managed to have two children. I don't know why she's not married to the guy she's married to. She was married to anymore, but according to Devin, she's been married three times Two just lasted a year. One lasted four years. And then she, there we are. There it is. She was engaged two other times. I mean, dude, it's just, it really is sad. Drew Barrymore has been ran through. She's got two kids. She's four years from 50. She's in a bad way, man. She really and is. And you see, also, I've noticed this is all about her as well. Yes. She's very, if you watch the whole interview, it's all about me, all about me, yes. all about me yes. the whole time. This girl is not doing what any of the girls on the panel that you had on, on Sunday are, are doing, what I'm doing, what Devin's doing. Right of trying to hang in there and keep our guy, keep right. him happy, keep him pleased, you know, um, all those things. She's not going to be doing that. She's going to go, oh, I'm Drew Barrymore. Yes. Loads of guys like me. Yes. I'm a 10. <laughs> and this girl is going to be like, no, you're not. <laughs> no, uh-uh. Nope. Um, uh, uh, GT Wholesale won with the $50 super chat. Says, love your work. Uh, love you, brother. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Cigar Man, $5, says, Christian Bale won't be able to save her even with the bat signal. Okay. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, let's continue. And I don't think anybody knows how to do anything, right? So don't put that pressure on yourself that you don't know how to do it. I think going into it, saying to yourself, I don't know how to do it, <laughs> is the first step of figuring out how to do it. Because it's those people that go in like, I know what I'm doing. See, this is all just Oprah cycle babble. And, and can, you see, can you also see there's a dynamic going on here? Okay. Okay. And it, I, I, if Devin's in the studio, she'll see this. Her and this guy, they're both loony. Right? <laughs> yes, they are. Look at them together. They're yeah. like, they might as well be in a lunatic asylum for this moment. Yeah, dude. Yeah, listen, he is, because he is, he's all over the place, right? Um, and listen, we know Drew Barrymore has mental illness. Uh, dude, she tried to end herself at 14 years old. Uh, this guy actually is one of the hosts of the really popular show, uh, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. I actually used to watch this show to try to figure out how to dress <clears throat> because, listen, say what you want about their sexuality. Dude, gay guys know how to dress. They know how to dress men. They know how to dress men in such a way that makes you attractive to women. So I don't understand why he's talking to Drew Barrymore. I don't know why he's talking to Drew Barrymore about the struggles of dating as a single mom. I don't know how that, I don't know how this guy relates. Who knows? <laughs> I got this. You know what? It's not going to affect my kids. What I do, like, you're thinking about that, and you're thinking how it's going to affect them, and you're being careful about it, which means you're a good mom. Oh, my God. That's oh, my God. So this guy is feeding into all of her delusions. That's what's happening. But he, know, he knows how to do that. Of course. He knows how to do that for two reasons, not only because he's a host, but I will say right now, if you have any guys, well, you probably don't have any gay guys on here, but gay guys are usually the most alpha dudes because they have no investment in what That's women right. think. If That's you watch right. the way these guys move, they have businesses, they have yes. successful relationships. Yes. I'm not talking about all, but the majority of sure. them, like you said, they know how to dress, but they're not being stopped on their path or in their tracks Nope. to please a woman or to please society. They're actually more like RP than... And listen, listen, listen. Without listen. even knowing what RP is. I, I agree with you 100%. And one thing that Myron and I talked about, the, I, I think it was the, the third or the second to the last time I was actually on the Fresh and Fit podcast, we talked about the fact that the reason why homosexual men are so happy and so successful 
is because they don't deal with women. They don't deal with women. They're only dealing, they date dudes. They go out with dudes. They have one night stands with dudes. This is why they have money, status, fame, clout, wealth, because they're not dealing with women. And I agree 100%, man. Say what you want about homosexual dudes, man. I've never had a problem with them. One of my, actually, one of my best friends uh, that I used to work with, um, we used to watch the Catherine, you know who Catherine Tate is? Yes. Yeah. We used to watch the Catherine, uh, we used to watch clips of the Catherine uh, Tate show, and there was a character that she played. His name was Derek Fay. We used to laugh at that all the time. But the reason why homosexual men are so happy, I think, and I agree with Myron, is because they're not dealing with women. Uh, J Blaze 11 says she needs Donovan to check her. Yeah. What this guy's doing is assuaging her ego. You got this girl. You're trying to be careful. Listen, man, this woman needs a Kevin Samuels. This woman needs someone to tell her, Drew, listen, you're not going to like this, and you're probably going to cry, but it's over for you. Like, it's, I mean, listen, you'll get the occasional fling here or there, but you are a Hollywood, you're an A-list Hollywood actress and celebrity who's four years from half a hundred with two kids. Who is going to, I mean, you don't want to be cruel, but at some point you got to tell her the truth, right? Yeah, send that to my channel. I help women. Ah, exactly. there we go. And that is Tal <laughs> that is Tallulah Johnson. Guys, go and subscribe to her channel. Go and subscribe to her channel, The Feminine Truth. That's youtube.com slash C slash The Feminine Truth. The link is in the description. Let's continue. Don't, don't <laughs> question that at all. I agree with you, Bobby Burke. Drew Barrymore, don't question that about yourself at all. I've seen there you with is. your kids freaking <sighs> off. I get it. I get it. But Gail King. Ugh. Where did the emotion come from? Because you're talking and you're fine. Yeah. Is it sometimes when you start saying the words out loud, all of a sudden it hits you? You know, I got ready with Bobby, Tan, Anthony, and Jonathan. The queer and eye fan, yeah. I'm such a queer eye fan. Yeah. And uh, for the straight guy, I had never realized and said out loud that I don't know how to date with kids. Mm. My kid's dad is happily remarried with the most wonderful woman in the world. Oh boy, that's not good. So her baby daddy is remarried to probably a woman younger than her. I would imagine. Oh boy, this is bad. My children have this extraordinary stepmom, and our processes have been different, and their side of the street is so functional and whole and happening. And I think I've been on the sidelines in a beautiful, honoring purgatory. Mm -hmm. And saying it out. Dude, a beautiful, honoring purgatory. Tallulah, do you see the mental gymnastics going on here? I mean, listen, I don't think Drew Barrymore is a bad person. But you know as well as I do, women in this, per women have to tell themselves this stuff in order to sleep at night. Am I wrong, or is she really just this delusional? No, they're um, they 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 are delusional, but they they say it. And sometimes when you watch women talk about this, you can see that they know it deep down. <laughs> they know it deep down, but they just can't. And the more and then the more that they are talking about it and realize. Oh, actually, no, I know what I'm talking about is crap. And then they literally just carry on yes. and force people more. And it sounds <laughs> absolutely delusional. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can see it in her face. It's almost like... Like, I just... I, it is easier as, as an older girl to accept it. It's hard. It's upsetting. It's triggering. You know, all of us girls, apart from the, the young two on the panel, sure. we all know that, you know, at night we're lying there thinking, oh, gosh, well, what, what's it going to be like in five years? Sure. What's it going to be like in two years? Right. You know, but we accept the reality of it and yep. we're not shocked with certain situations that happen in our life due to our age or um, backgrounds or whatever. It's just easier just to accept it. And, you know, like my channel, it's it gives me so much where... It's a place for me to be in a place of acceptance and also a place where I can try and get other women there as well. What what do you think is the most <clears throat> the the most important factor for women I guess to embark on to accept to accept the truth? Because the truth is hard to accept for both men and women. But how do women get to the point where you're at? How do they do that? Because Barrymore is 46 and she's still trying to talk herself into believing that there's a misdirect out there. How do you get women to understand and acknowledge the truth without going into a mental breakdown? Or is that impossible? It's near on impossible. I mean, I got it. You know, my story, I understood when I was when I was 16, 17 years old, right, you right, know, right. I got my first wake up call. This is, you know, how it is. And um yeah, I think I've just always been quite, 
I've been very intuitive around people. I've under, I've understood how this works okay. from, from a very young age. But I don't think it's possible with how the media enforces everything. Ah. If we were in the 50s, and then we would have an understanding. Right. You know, we would have an understanding. You know, our time has, has come to an end with that now. We need to embrace where we are now. But I think it's important, you know, women take it the wrong way sometimes. I mean, with, with my channel... I, a, a, a few women will look at that and think, but I am valuable and she doesn't value herself of everything she's saying. And that's not true. Right. Um, every woman has value no matter what. However, their sexual market value, they have to understand is not the same. So the sexual market value is not the same, but it doesn't mean that, you know, just because we're saying that, it doesn't mean that you have no value. You could be, Drew Marriott could more for all we know, could be an amazing mum. She could be, you know, all these things. But she's not accepting that she can't compete with her 26-year-old self. Right. Her 46-year-old self. She still has taken the 26-year-old mindset and taken it to 46 and still thinks that, She's going to still have the same uh, level of guys mm -hmm. that she's still got it that you know, all these things. And it's just not the, it's the sad reality, but it is reality. It's the RP for sure. I think Drew Barrymore <clears throat> is, <clears throat> pardon me, emotionally stunted. And you put it, you put it perfectly. She's not talking like a 46 year old woman who understands that her sexual market value is is lower, if not plummeted completely. She's talking like a delusional 26-year-old, just like you said, who thinks that she is still going to have access to these high-caliber guys. But when she cries, whether that's real or fake or not, that, I think, is just a little bit of reality biting her in the ass. Listen, listen, I know you think you're... I, I know you're acting like you're 26, but we're 46, sweetheart. Like, it's, it's just yeah. not... It's just not going to happen. What happens a lot with girls, and I've said this before... As soon as men, or as soon as women know that men are sexually interested in them, they stop maturing. At least that's the way it is now. It, it, this is not the way it was back in the 1950s and 60s or 40s and 50s. But as soon as women figure out that men are sexually interested in them, all of a sudden, all of their maturity stops. And the reason for that is because women inherently know that their sexuality is the, is their key, their ticket to everything. Yeah. It's their ticket to freedom. It's their a ticket to marriage, kids, family security. Security, et cetera, et cetera. But <clears throat> what what ends up happening is that instead of getting married or or seeking a high value man to settle down with and have a family with, they ride the carousel and they still have that same 13, 14 year old so, mindset. Yeah. Yeah. So and Drew, listen, let's just let, let's just assume that Drew lost her virginity at 13 years old. Okay, so she's probably started maturing again when she was 35, which means she probably has the mind of a 20 year old. What are your thoughts? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely, you know, the fact as well that, you know, she's only been sober for a few years yeah. also makes me feel that there was an emotional stunting. Um, you know, a lot of people when they get when they get sober, that's when, you know, they say, oh, I'm, I'm an adult now. And, you right. know, I'm starting to it's, it's the mindset rather than, you know, than, you know, I'm not saying she's acting like a baby, but, you know, sure. it's just that mindset. But I, I think it goes a lot deeper than that. This is a worldwide problem. Yes, that is, is you know, she's sitting there still saying you know oh you know I, I, you know i'm still the best i'm right, the best and right. yes you could be you could be the best mom you could be the, she could be the best friend you never know like i'm sure she'd be a lovely friend right um because she's the best actress you know she's got all these things but you have to understand that you know at 46 your sexual it's just your sexual market value yes. not your value your sexual right. market value is not the same. That's like me saying, okay, well, you know, I, I, I'm going to compete with my 27 year old self, 25 okay. year old self, 23 year old self. If I look at all those stages in my life, there's just no way. No, there's no not. way. It's not possible. Listen, uh, something you just said uh, really struck a chord with me. The older you get, the lower <clears throat> the lower your sexual market value goes. But the yeah. older you get, the higher your overall and relationship market value goes. 
Um, <clears throat> there are a few advantages to dating older women. When I say older women, these are women who are not in their 20s. Women, and now, women who are older, uh, listen, the cougar myth, cougars play games just like everybody else, guys. That That's that's just all there is to it. But older women have been around longer, so they know more, right? You can have a more intelligent conversation with them. Uh, older women tend to know how to cook better. Older women are a little bit more established financially. Whether that's good or bad is neither here nor there, but older women also have a better handle on finances. Now, listen, Kevin Samuels talked about the fact that, listen, man, I'm out here dating women. Women are broke. Right, women are broke. So, so I under, so so just because a woman is older does not mean that she is not still emotionally immature. But take my girlfriend for example, Devin. She's been an SEO expert for the better part of the last twenty years, and so her sexual market value has been in steep decline since the age of twenty nine or thirty. But her relationship market value is yeah. it, it's high. It was high enough combined with her sexual market value for me to actually commit to her long term. So I think what women need to do is they need to come up with a plan. You're not going to have that high sexual market value forever. You're going to age. You're going to become less attractive. But that doesn't mean your value has to plummet. This means developing yourself outside of just your looks. I can't imagine what the dating market is going to look like in ten years with all of these forty somethings with these Brazilian butt lifts and all this plastic surgery and all these tattoos who don't know how to do anything but pose for Instagram and dudes are not going to be checking for women like that no and it's really funny you should say that because when it's 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 actually kind of warm my heart actually I mean my mum my mum was like RP 100% she like understood it and um when Instagram came out and Facebook came out I used to go like because obviously it was it was quite tough for me to deal with Right, as right. a woman, of seeing course. all these girls, and I, obviously I was older sure. and not older than all these these girls, you know, and all these Instagram. And the, listen, like these that. Instagram models yeah. are fucking gorgeous. They really are, but yeah. that's really all that's good about them. And then I'd say to my mom, "Oh, like you know, oh, but look at that, like you know, I'm never going to be able to be that." Da, 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 da. And this was when I was in like my late twenties, you know, I still kind of had it, but sure. Um, my mom would go. She wouldn't be sympathetic with me, but she'd go, okay, well, she'll be she'll be slitting our wrists then in 20 years, won't she? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, mom, I was like, wow, oh, your mom kept it 100. It. She said she's not going to look like that in 20 years. No. And if my grandmother had seen that, she would have just said, you know, why are you showcasing? You know, it's all the showcasing it around. And what I think with, with Devon um and and with some of the other uh janelle the other girls on the panel um is that they're very rare for their age to be getting this stuff yes there are 40 40 year old women 30 girls my age in it their late 30s right that don't get it no they They don't and they never will they're a rare find and they're not interested they're still or oh, he cooks for me at night i want him to cook and i'm not going to do anything and why should i and you know just being non-agreeable right non like accommodating it's really important to accommodate your partner yes, you yes. after them and th- these women don't no they don't, they don't. the more attractive a woman is the less accommodating she is it, but if you're attractive and accommodating dude high value men are going to be uh, break, breaking yeah, but down I'm, your door i'm literally to- i'm talking about women like from late 30s upwards oh they're yes not, okay they're, they're not they're not accommodating oh they still don't God. get it this is incredible. i guarantee you that Devin, you know if she was to pick out like six of her girlfriends mm-hmm. maybe one of them will get this stuff Shh. Good God, man. Yeah. And that's where that's actually what we're going to be talking about on Not All Women on uh, Sunday at noon Eastern, uh, five British time, um, is the, the friendships and the family members that you sort of lose because you live this life. So that's going to be a very, yeah. very interesting uh, panel discussion. Theo Waff with the $100 super chat says she was a super babe back in the day. No way I would even date her now even with all her money. Let's take a quick look at what Drew Barrymore used to... Listen, Drew Barrymore used to be quite attractive. Uh, She really... And you could tell she still kind of had the baby fat, but there she is. Oh, my God. She was... Look at that. She was... Dude, she was the cutest thing anyone had ever seen on E.T. This, of course, is 1980s. Now, she's a little bit more refined here. She actually looks very good in this picture, and she probably looks like she's in her 30s. Um, Some women... It's weird. Some women, when they actually... When 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 they get a little bit older, they actually start to take weight loss a little bit better. So yes, she can't compete with herself back in her twenties, but 
a lot of times women will women are in better shape in their 40s than they are in their 30s or 20s. Uh, Devin, for example, she's in better shape now at 45 than she ever was at 35. Um, uh, probably not even 25. She's in the best shape she's ever been in since she was 20 years old. That's what makes her attractive. But yeah, listen, Drew used to be a super babe, but now she is super mm, not. Uh, let uh, let us continue with this breakdown. Loud. I've been saying that it's me. It's my choice. You know, I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. I want to wait. I don't think I said out loud that it's really because of I have these two daughters. That you really want to and you don't know. Oh, boy. So now she's so now she's telling everyone she's single because through no fault of her own. It's it's her children are the re like I could be I could be in, in a relationship, but. I'm trying to be a good mom, so that's why. Like, in other words, you can't fire me because I quit. What, what do you think of that? I just think it's all an act. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. It's it's it, but again. You can see me, me, me. You can yes, see Harry yes. to take up the space. Look at this guy. Look at him. Yeah. At the end. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nate Burleson. Yeah, he's not buying it. He's not buying it. <laughs> he's, he's just like no. He's just like absolutely not. It's you know, it's all about me. Um, it's and but she's not going to say this isn't. These aren't the guys that I want. She's just blaming it on 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 the kids. Yeah, she really I can is. See it a mile off. Uh, and this other woman, this other woman looks like kind of, I, I've never seen this woman before. She's probably famous in America, but yeah. she's very Oprah, very woke, yes. very, yes. you know, oh, and she will enforce this continuously. Yes. Uh, yeah, she's, and this guy on the end is just like not having it. He's like, yeah, he Nate is it. like, dude, and Nate is a man, right? Um, yeah, Gail King, the uh, the woman you're talking about, yeah, one of Oprah's best friends, very masculine, very da 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 da. There's nothing really attractive about her. Uh, Allie of Real Femme Sapiens says, since when is purgatory beautiful? Yeah, that's a good point. She also says older women with marriage and family aren't concerned with the wall at all. She wouldn't be worried about her sexual market value if she had relationship market value, like get married and bake cookies right exactly drew knows that other than her money she has nothing to offer a man do you wait hold on now wait a minute do you think drew knows she has nothing to offer a man or is this something she hadn't figured out yet uh she hasn't figured oh out my she, thinks, God. she thinks she just needs to be her oh jesus christ oh drew 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 i don't think drew barrymore is a bad person clearly she had a rough upbringing she's been through a lot but dude she is oh boy she is she's in for a rude awakening she really is how old are your daughters now seven and nine mm -hmm. so i've been single. oh my god seven and nine two young daughters for six years mm -hmm. and i just have <gasps> honestly really not ha known how to do this i'll go on Listen to this. She says, I've been single now for six years. But listen. Occasional date, but that's only in the last, like, two years. Oh, uh, oh my God. Oh, Tallulah, listen to this entire interaction. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So I've been single for six years, <gasps> and I just have honestly really not ha known how to do this. I'll go on an occasional date, but that's only in the last, like, two years. It took me four to even step out there. Oh, boy. When women say I haven't been in a relationship in five years, six years, what they want us to believe is that they've been home taking care of the kids or or waiting for Jesus Christ himself to send her Mr. Right. But Drew Barrymore mm -hmm. has money. If she wants to go out and hook up with guys, she could do that because she could just hire someone to come watch her kids or a nanny. This woman just sat here and told us that she hasn't been in a relationship in six years. And then she tried to lie to us and say, well, I've, I'll go on the occasional date, but... That's only been the last couple of years. Tallulah, do you buy that? Or do you think she's just been sport fucking her way around Hollywood? Yeah, I just think that, like, she's, it's, you know, whether she, she hasn't had a relationship in six years. And it's all, it's the vulnerable act again. Yes. And it's like, because guys don't want to deal with what's coming with you. Yes, yes. They don't. And it's just, it's just a vulnerable act. Oh my God! This is in, in this is incredible. Five hundred. This is the norm, Donovan. This is this really is the norm. This is like what it's like living in in uh, I don't know about America, but in England, this is how they go on. It's all about oh you know, but I I, I just don't know about like stepping out there, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, you do. Just no one wants you. <laughs> Listen, you're absolutely We've right. We've been trying to text Christian Bale, oh Edward Westwick, all these dudes. I guarantee you go through her phone and she has sent messages to all of them. I guarantee, I guarantee it, 100%. It. And, they, and they all leave her on red. I can promise yep. you they all, they all leave her on yep. the scene. <laughs> yeah. 
Poor Drew Barrymore. Oh, well, I mean, listen, man, she 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 made her choices. Uh, she made her bed. Uh, she has to lay in it. Um, da -da 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 -da. Wait, give me a second here. Oh, uh, Jay Blaze says, uh, zero excuse. He also says, Adam Sandler saved her career with The Wedding Singer. So Adam Sandler is a very good friend of Drew Barrymore. They have been in three romantic comedies together. The first one was The Wedding Singer. The second one was 51st Dates. And I think the last one was Blended Family. All three of those, well, I didn't really like 51st Dates. The Wedding Singer was awesome because it was set back in the 80s and Adam Sandler was this wedding singer. Um, but yeah, I think Adam Sandler definitely saved her career. And I'll tell you this, uh, I'll bet you she's probably shot uh, Adam Sandler a few texts as well. <laughs> People have oh, by the way, 557 people watching. We have reached a new high for this show. Let me play the sound effect. 547 people watching. Guys, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to Tallulah's YouTube channel, The Feminine Truth. I'm going to put it up on the screen at the end of this breakdown and force you guys to subscribe. Let's continue. Different processes. Yeah. Then enter a pandemic when you yes. think maybe oh, I should step go. out of my here comfort zone here and go. even see... Um, I also think it's different for women too, Drew, with young daughters. I think it's young children. I think that that's very different, difficult. So what 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 have you decided? What have you decided? How are you navigating it? Oh, this will be funny. Very good question, Ms. King. I also honestly found Zoom dates um, really unromantic. Yeah. I, I, they're just a reminder. <laughs> I imagine. Wait, what kind of dates? Hang on a second. Yes. You know, I also honestly found Zoom dates um, really unromantic. What are Zoom dates? I, they're just a reminder. <laughs> I cannot imagine them. They're a reminder to me of the state of the world we're living in. Yes. However, point counterpoint, you can't fight City Hall. Online dating is where it's at. This is not a bad editing process. I've had a few in-person dates that I would have given anything for them to be on Zoom. <laughs> and Oh, Zoom. Do you mean she's actually going on dates? Oh, Jesus fuck. This is bad. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm bad. ready to. This is Queer Eye, X Drew Barrymore Show, X kind of New York Times modern love. There's a secret here. recipe that's happening in this episode that is vulnerable and about all of us. How do we date in the mm -hmm. modern world mm -hmm. and navigate family and life and romance and virtual and pandemic? And really, it's about so much of the episode is really about talking to these wonderful men who go out there. And I'm no different than any of their other clients. We're trying to get. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> oh, yes, you are different. You are a celebrity who is 46 with two kids. Holy smokes. Tallulah, you're right. She does not get it. She thinks she's the same as everybody else. I'm no different from any of your other clients. Are you kidding me with this? Yeah, she doesn't get it. And right. I see, again, the vulnerable. Oh, I'm so vulnerable. I'm actually going to step out of my comfort yes. zone. Yes, oh, here we go. I'm telling you, Christian Bell messages her and says, can I come over? I'm single. <laughs> She's not going to be talking about stepping out of her comfort zone. <laughs> She'd probably pass out if Christian Bale ever did that because she'd probably think it was a trick. <laughs> yeah. Let me not be mean. Let me not be I'm mean. telling you. <laughs> and it's that thing that, you know, Rolo always talks about, you know, uh, one rule for, like, you know, alphas and the other for betas, right? Yeah, She yeah. wants an alpha, and it's yep. just not going to happen. Gonna happen. And she wants an alpha that's probably in that industry that is will know her history and will have absolutely no respect for her. Wow. She's not going to go with just a, even a standard high value guy. She's aiming for like Christian Bales and like Ed Roswick. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Dude, that ain't I mean, going to happen. That no. is not going to happen. I am so sorry. Wow, she really is. She's lost it. Uh, Cryptic Lovecraft, $50 super chat. Appreciate that. Says Donovan, it broke my heart to hear you call stuff on Molyneux a racist. I followed him for a long time. I only donate to you, him, and Fresh and Fit and Rollo. I assure you that I don't donate to a racist. That's why it broke my heart to hear you say that. Okay. Um, I listen, you're not the first person uh who has told me that, so maybe my assessment of him is wrong. Listen, man, um, I'll make uh, some pretty provocative statements, and um I'm more than willing to uh admit uh, whether I, I'm more than willing to admit that with new information, um, I could be wrong. You are probably the fourth or fifth person uh, that has vehemently told me, hey, Molyneux is not a racist. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll take it upon myself to do a little bit more research. And because uh, that's that's a pretty strong term. I really believe that he was. But enough people have told me that he isn't for me to at least reconsider my position. So I'll probably do a little bit more research on that. Uh, let us continue. Mm. Yeah. It's a simple. Uh, Jay Blaze 11 says Nikki Glazer has said she has trouble dating and she's more attractive and doesn't have kids. Yeah, Nikki Glaser is a very attractive uh, stand-up comedian, right? But she doesn't have any kids. She is young and attractive, but she's having trouble dating. This is just how this is. It seems like you know what you don't want to do when it comes to your kids. 
However, you're working out what you do want when it comes to a partner. So what are you looking for, can you say, at this point in a relationship? Oh, boy. This is the fresh and fit, uh, the, the female delusion calculator. Let's, this, this should be good. Definitely um, someone who isn't mar interested in marriage or kids. Um, because so did you ask that on the first Zoom call? Wait a minute. Someone who isn't interested in marriage or kids? I'm not understanding. Why do you think mm -hmm. she's saying that, uh, Tallulah? Do you have any? Wow, that's weird. That is really weird. Let's look that at the is weird. That is weird. I think she slipped up there a little yeah. bit. Um, she, I think she's just going to blame it on like her last marriage was so bad. That's probably what she's talking about. Yeah, she's been married three times. And she's trying to say like, who, who, who someone who hasn't got kids? Is she crazy? Another mm. man is not going to take on your kids <laughs> unless he maybe has his own, and that's even a maybe. Oh so God. it's all okay for her. You see, right. but it's not good for him. Oh my God, this is, dude, this is crazy. I can't believe, uh, Andrew Ward says, I don't know if going on national television to announce her desperation is helping. I don't know either, but it's so weird. It is so weird to tell her, well, I'm looking for a guy who's not interested in marriage or kids. Let's, uh, you know, I don't even talk about my kids, uh, actually, because I think that we probably have to get to know each other first. Although I would love to know right out of the gate if kids were a non-negotiable for them. Mm -hmm. That would be helpful. That would be good to know up front. Check. Yeah. Great. Moving on. Yeah, that's just it. Th see, that's again, killed. that's it. Yeah. The men she's looking for are not going to want to date a 46-year-old woman with kids. That's just, she knows that. She has to know. She has to know that. Nice. Listen, there are plenty of bottom 80 percenters that would love to, hey, I'm dating Drew Barrymore. I'm a nobody. But those aren't the kinds of guys she wants. Oh, my God. This is bad. Oh, Cryptic Lovecraft with a $20 super chat says, that alone means a lot to me. Thank you. Love you, man. All right. No problem. No problem. But I don't talk about. Appreciate that uh, $20 super chat. Appreciate that. And because I'm so protective of them that uh, it makes me feel uh, vulnerable to discuss them. I have to know you a little bit better right. and have some trust in order to even discuss So you're them. not looking. This is so funny. So. Does she not understand that she is Drew Barrymore, number one? Number two, everybody has the internet in their pocket. And number three, nobody doesn't know. she She's on CBS talking about her kids. So, I mean, like, like who is she hoping to date? Some person that doesn't have a television set or a phone? Uh, hi, my name is Drew. Oh, hey, Drew, how are you doing? What, she's not going to discuss her kids, like, because they don't? What are we doing? Of course they're going to know she has kids. Oh, my God. I think, dude, you're right, Tallulah. I think she's crazy. I really do think she's crazy. Look at the look on her face. Yeah, and it's and it, again, it makes me feel vulnerable. Oh my god! All wow. about me. Everything yes. she said. The whole interview is about me, me, me. Not once has even an interviewer asked her. Okay, so you're looking for this guy. What do? You, how do you want to make this guy's life? How can you make it better? That's not a bad interview question. Mm -mm -mm. Why can't they say it? Like one of the guys could say it. It doesn't even have to come from the woman. It's just absolutely insane. This is crazy. This is crazy. Uh, J uh, Blaze, listen, Jay Blaze 11 says she's aiming for the Amish. I, I, honestly, that's probably where she's going to have to go. But I think even Amish people, I think, I think Amish, I think Amish people probably have the internet too. No. <laughs> Get married again. Oh, yeah. God, never. Really? No. Oh, you say that now. No, I agree. I, I never that say that now. Nope. Oh, listen to this. So she's like, listen to this. This is funny. So she really doesn't want to get married again. You get married again. You oh, so God, never. <laughs> really? No. Oh, you say oh, that now. No, I agree. I, I, I never say, say that now. Divorce, like, no, no, marriage. no. There's no reason to be. I can, I would maybe live with someone again, right. maybe, mm -hmm. but I've had kids and I'm, there's no way. I will never, ever, ever, ever. It's like you've been on that road. Live with someone, maybe. Oh, boy. She's talking like she's 26 years old with 26 years old. Right already. We're going to save this tape, Nate. Okay. I will never, ever, ever, ever. You know what I would like to start? I think there's a several billion dollar cottage industry called a promise ceremony out there okay. that negates oh, yeah. legality like that. Yeah. and goes out for the weekend with all your friends yeah. and the plans and the food trucks and the fantasies and the I love you profession, prof professors. Yeah, sweetheart, that's called private marriage. <laughs> that's what she's talking about. Have you ever heard of the concept of private marriage? Yes. Yes, that's what she's talking about is a private marriage. Now, she's right. There could be a cottage industry where you can get married without getting married. Uh, apparently, uh, the internet seems to think that's what Devin and I did. We did not. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, what she's talking about is private marriage. Now, listen, she's probably right. That could be a cottage industry. Unfortunately for Drew, she's not going to have many Mm, options. That's the word I'm looking for. Like, pr uh, pr Declaration. professing okay. your love in front of your friends because that's also missing yeah, out right. of an I never will get married no, again. That's called the anniversary toast. This is right? true. Um, maybe oh, I should introduce you to my older brother who's single. Uh, he coached for the Minnesota Timberwolves. He, he <gasps> uh oh. 
Nate Burleson is a black man and just told this white girl that her brother is single. And look at the look on her face. Uh Uh-oh. Now, not to get not to get racial here, but uh, let's just keep it real. A lot of older white women who are no longer attractive to white guys tend to swim to the <clears throat> darker side of the ocean. And here is Nate Burleson suggesting that his brother, who is a coach for the Minnesota Timberwolves, is single. And look at Drew. She's tickled pink. She looks almost as cute as she did in E.T. <laughs> <laughs> that to me years ago. This is kind of like, oh, wow. He said he's going to start a website um, called don'tgetmarried.com uh, because he, it's, like, it's not necessary if you don't need to get married. That's a separate conversation. I'm joking. But you mentioned bravery, though. Um, no, he's not. People say if you're scared of heights, he's go not joking. Yeah, aqu- What's that? He's not joking. No, he's not. He's not joking at all. Yes. For people at home that have hesitation, that are unsure about themselves, throwing themselves into the dating scene. Is it that seconds. simple? Just jumping into the water? Is that the advice you would give them? And also having the ability to sit with the Queer Eye crew and realize that this is not just about me being stuck. That this. Oh, boy. So now she is feeding into her own. She's feeding into her own delusions. Um, yeah. I think I think I think we've heard enough uh, from uh, from Miss Barrymore. Holy! Now it's funny because I I, I watched this. Uh, I watched this interview, and when I watch these interviews, a lot of times I'm kind of half paying attention. But I learned a lot more just watching that interview just now uh, than I did the than I did the first time. So listen, as we round third and head for home, Tallulah, what are your overall thoughts on Miss Barrymore? Five hundred and eighty-four people watching, guys. Tallulah, we have kicked, we have knocked it out of the park today. We've almost got 600 people watching, and I think it's going to continue to go up. So thank you for your added value. But what are your final thoughts on Drew Barrymore? Uh, On her dating situation? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm I'm just going to sort of reiterate a lot that I've said already throughout the video is, you know, it, it definitely shows that, Everything where women think that their career is attractive, that right. 100% shows it's not, right? Because there's no guys around for her. Okay. So the career is not attractive. Um, I would also say that, um, you know, she is, again, trying to go for one of these high value guys um, who are not interested in her things have moved on right. she's operating in a 26 year old mindset yes. rather than a 46 year old mindset and no one has ever ho- held her like accountable you can tell right. that as well that's right um yeah yeah so uh yeah i just yeah i just think <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> there's not much more to say is there well, like it's it's, it's it's preferences as well you know okay. she's got this she's got this preference that she wants but it's, you know, the Christian Bales and the Ed West, Web, Web Westwicks and all these guys, they're done. Yeah. You know, she's an alpha widow yeah. and she has to accept it and she has to move forward. And perhaps, you know, just, just stop operating in a 26-year-old mindset because you are not 26, you are 46. Uh, yeah, Things yeah, yeah. change. But she's not, it was all that whole interview, it was all about me. Yep. I feel vulnerable i'm stepping out yes. of my comfort zone yes. i'm this i'm that oh poor me timid me vulnerable me no not at all the whole dynamic there was just i'm telling you like i said if she texts christian bale <laughs> or any of these guys and these guys were like yeah i'm single i'm coming over she's not gonna go i'm not comfortable yes she's jumped she's going over there she's going over there she is Tallulah Johnson. Uh, subscribe to her YouTube channel. I'm actually going to pull your YouTube channel up here. Um, tell me a little bit, uh, as I pull this up, tell the people about your YouTube channel and what you hope to accomplish with it. Sure. So my YouTube channel is The Feminine Truth. Uh, it's very, very new, but I hope to accomplish being able to get this message to women, especially women that are of my age or older, you know, to accept the reality. I am very, very harsh on the channel, but I'm also very loving as yes, well. Yes, of course, of and, course. You know, it's um, the reason I think it may come across harsh is because it, I am speaking the truth. And, you know, a stop having these demands. It's only going to put guys off of you. 
start working on yourself and it's about all about self-improvement yes. for women women just don't want to self-improve and you know that that may be if you're in a relationship what can you offer him how can you still stay in there how can you keep your sexual market value yes. higher how can you do that it's not about your value like i said every human has value especially women right they're beautiful people but your sexual market value is lower and and it's about understanding that that once you get to a certain age now what now what can i pull out pull out of um uh, out out of me rather than just only only looks and it also focuses a lot on the media right. and so and social media and how perhaps you know you should rethink having social media especially right. if you're in a relationship and stop posting pictures of yourself that's right. my main thing absolutely, absolutely. Of yourself on um instagram and it also um it does it has a little bit on there about you know um the what women rate as higher value men and what women rate as as lower value men and just it's it's really the the harsh reality of the world but hopefully it really can help some women out there so okay. please um subscribe please do to the please channel subscribe we're trying to get her to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the month. It is January 20th. She is at 459 subscribers. We got to get her to 1,000 subscribers so she can start uh, monetizing her channel. Uh, some of her video titles is how do you keep the alpha man? Delete your Instagram for him. Alpha and beta male part one. Beta male enablers. Women should not have male friends. 35 plus women in the dating market. Three things high value men want. Age matters. Stop posting bikini photos and so on and so forth. Uh, Tallulah keeps it raw and she keeps it real. Um, Cryptic Lovecraft, $5, says, Has Tallulah ever heard the song Tallulah by Sonata Arctica, uh, Arctica? The lyrics are blue pill, but it's still a pretty love ballad. I love it. Have you ever heard of the song Tallulah? Yeah, everyone sings it to me. Oh, wow. Well, there we go. All right. Very good. <laughs> So Tallulah gets the song uh, Tallulah uh, sang to her all the time. Um, well, my legal name is Alex, and no one's ever sang me a song about Alex. So I guess that uh... <laughs> um, Damian Wade with the uh, $20 Super Chat says, can you get the daughters on the show? Uh, I don't know if I could get Drew Barrymore's daughters on the show. That doesn't make any sense at all. Um, please clarify your uh, your question there, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wade. Um, any any closing thoughts before we uh, before we call it? No closing thoughts. Thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. And thanks everyone in the chat. It's really good to have your support. And a few of the names that have been read out, I know you've been supporting my channel and please know I really appreciate you all. Uh, she has just jumped to 474 subscribers. So we are almost halfway there. Uh, the Feminine Truth, she is Tallulah Johnson. Thank you guys very much for watching and we'll see. You. So at one o'clock today, one o'clock today, I will be joined I'll be joined by Allie, where we are going to talk about, I think she's like a 54, 55-year-old supermodel who says attraction has no expiration date. That should be fun. I guess this, should, this could be called Post-Wall Thursday or something to that effect.